So I did a lot of demon fusing. I did a lot of grinding, fused a lot of demons. Uh, among them being the Moire sisters, I think they're called, from uh, Greek mythology. Uh, honestly, Lachesis isn't all that great. Um, partially because she's... I'm going to end up having it so that she's strictly support. Um, and in my personal opinion, a party member who's strictly support really isn't all that great. If they're healing and support, that's a different story. Um, that I suppose they maybe toss out a bunch of status ailments and all that. Uh, but honestly, the main reason she's in my party is because she naturally has boon boost, uh, such that her essence does as well. So, for that alone, she's actually worth fusing. Uh, but that said, you know, Clotho is pretty well suited for healing. Uh, I actually fused her specifically to use against, uh, Kuang Wong, because he's really pissing me off. Uh, and not account of the fact that yeah, she's pretty good at healing. She can do a bit of support here. And as you can notice, if you look right above this little thumbnail, on this little webcam thumbnail, she's immune to sleep, which is one of the things that made the boss, made the fight against Huang Long rather difficult once you get to the point where he summons Suzaku. Also, Atropos is a pretty awesome offensive mage. And if you fuse all three of them, you can then fuse Norn over here, who naturally has Luster Candy. Uh, I think I gave her Boon Boost from uh, Lachesis. But first, I'm gonna clear up crap. Gonna clear out the. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Abscess that this stooge is guarding. It's also kind of fitting that uh, Clotho, Lachesis, and Batchpos have the kind of aptitudes that they, the natural aptitudes for healing, support, and you know, offensive magic, respectively. Uh, this actually does kind of tie into how those characters were in Kind of having trouble remembering exactly which season of Legends of Tomorrow it was, but in either case, it actually, but whatever the season was, it's pretty fitting. So, Clotho was the one that would actually spin the threads that would kind of give a person the, basically by spinning that thread, it would essentially kind of give them their life. Anyway, the... Because of how she spins the thread that essentially gives a person their life, so to speak. Yeah, it might be a lot of damage to bar on. Hmm, took off a good chunk of damage there. I 
just didn't need to guard. Oops. Oh well. I mean, she's only got physical attacks. Makes her. Oh, wait, no, she doesn't. Eh. I am sure Mother Harlot can stand it. That point. Yeah, so you can use Megiddo Lo <clears throat> the Megiddo spells to actually damage wrong, duh. Or, as I ended up figuring out when I was grinding for money, you could just use this. Just use attacks with the pierce element and they'll just, well, pierce through. So as I was saying, since Clothos spins the threads that gives a person their life, that's kind of why it is that in this game Clotho is a very is a very capable healer, and in Legends of Tomorrow, she was the one of the three Moira sisters who broke the loom of fate, thus giving people not just a life, but giving them their own life to live. Hmm. Oh! Well, that's convenient! Didn't know Mother Harlot naturally reflected that. That's also why it is that Clotho uh, is very well suited to healing in this game. Art of Essence is three. Nice! Merchant's Hospitality two, Recover Mastery three, and Support Mastery three. Also, as I was running around in uh, the Asakusa area last night, uh, I stumbled upon right by where Vasuki is. <laughs> I was even trying to find the guy. I was just running around trying to scrounge for stuff. Welcomed. You wished. You wished to. Alright. So, let's see if memory serves. Uh, that means that with that, with Art of Essences 3, I can now also get Boon Boost from Titania's Essence. Let's see, it looks like there's still some stuff that. Scrounge up around here. Oh yeah, it's that quest too. Yeah, I think I'll try and uncover that uh, blank area of the map. Okay, so Lachesis. She is the 
goddess of fate in Greek mythology who portions out the thread. The threads with which a person's life or fate is determined. Here you go. Hey. Uh -huh. And thus she kind of determines and controls a person's fate. Hence why in Legends of Tomorrow she's a big control freak. You know, very I mean, she's a very manipulative individual. Huh. I think a dead end like that would have something there. And also why it is that she is very well suited, I mean, she's very adept at uh, support, magic, and ailments. By doing that, she controls the flow of the battle. You got a new goddess with you, but do you really got power to create a new world? Well, maybe not yet. Kind of need the throne for that, don't you? Crap, he's supposed to get out there. And... Hola, como esta? Anyway, uh, and the third one, Atropos, she's the person who, you know, cuts a person's thread of fate or whatever, thread of fate, life thread, whatever the heck it is, uh, when their time is up. That's why it is that in this game, she's a very powerful offensive mage. Say, say. You know, Sanchez has since... Since Soji entrance in Asakusa 5.45 meters tall. Weigh a whole ton, yeah, yeah. Neo, you mean like the the two games? I know that's what the title is referring to. Oh hey, would you look at that? Yeah, sure, might as well. Uh, whoops. <laughs> anyway, so like I said, that's why it is that she's a very powerful offensive mage in this game, and why she was a somewhat of a cold blooded assassin in Legends of Tomorrow. supposed to get over there. Well, I know that way where there leads to the Temple of Eternity. I wonder if part of that area kind of circles back over to there, because that's the only way I can think of that you could actually reach that area. Then there's a question for you. Get over to where that name on is. Perhaps. It's supposed to be this way. Yeah! Slow pressure or something? Head for like gotta split open. Huh? It actually split? Ah! Hmm? Oh. I guess I found out how to get there. Oh 
looks like there's a highway up the, in the bogey. Oh, Floros. Flower? Whatever. Your soul is mine! Uh, yeah, that won't be necessary. Yes. Well, it's a really good skill, just not on her. Us all. Well, yeah, gotta catch them all. Oh, you want some? Well, do you? Hey, uh... yeah, it's okay. Especially with that uh, me Tama there. Okay, take that back. That thing's probably gonna run. Yep. Don't neglect raising the uh, not being as affinities. Doesn't matter what kind of build you go for, make sure to raise their affinities. If nothing else, it'll make their spells more cost efficient. Uh -huh. Which is gonna be really nice if you go for a healing and support build. But I recommend going for a more offensive one, at least in general. Thor's Essence. That could really come in handy because he learned some really powerful skills. Or his Essence has some really, really powerful skills. Whatever. Booyah! Alright. Uh... I'm not certain, but I... Wait, hang on. Oh. Let's see. Pick up that quest, and then I head over to that last abscess, because I think I can take it on. Miss this dude. You sense a presence of powerful demons? Me, this part of Dot, too dangerous. Good 
Maybe for a Mimon. But not for an Ahomino! No, thank you. Humans turn to husks even after death. I'm traveling this land to soothe their many soulless ghosts. I am Loa, spirit of ghosts. I ask for your cooperation. I approve of your willingness to help, then I wholeheartedly accept your offer. In order to allow those soulless ghosts to pass on, we will require a bomb of life. Bring two to start. Yo, Gabe. Hang on. What do I get for this? Uh, a bead chain. Okay, but why is it called incentive for as incentive for incense? Whatever. Have you gathered the bomb of life? Uh, yes, I have. Yes, these are indeed the bomb of life I asked for. Now these ghostly thoughts should be turned to their souls and disappear. You've done well. Take this as a reward. However, I still do not have enough bomb of life. Should you bring me more, I shall reward you again. Just in case someone makes issue with the kind of voice I did, I wasn't trying to go for a Jamaican accent. I probably would have been botching it anyway. Accents, mimicking voices, uh, it takes practice. And, well, I practiced a lot. At least with that kind of thing in general. Okay. So, for the... So for that last abscess... The demons aren't particularly powerful ones, at least with regards to their race, but they're very high level. Now, I could try and you know, just sort of brute force it by, you know, grinding a bunch of levels and all that in order to minimize the penalty, but their stats aren't very high either. The main issue is that I just don't do much in the way of damage. But... If I'm not mistaken, poison isn't going to be affected by any sort of stat penalty due to a difference in levels. That's why I've got Fafnir here. Not only does he have a skill that can poison all of them... Had I missed that meme on before... Here, here, Nordic God Odin holding key of harmony. Darn it.
Anyway, so, like I said, I've got Fafnir in my party because not only does he have a skill... Not only does he have a skill that can poison enemies, well, all enemies, he also has the two passive skills that boost the damage that poison, or that boost poison damage dealt. So, as I was saying, Fafnir had... I made sure to give Fafnir the... Well, when I fused him, I made sure to give him the skill... I made sure to have him have it so that he had the skills Toxic Cloud, Poison Adept, and Poison Master, so that he could poison all those enemies in that abscess, and the poison would do maximum damage. Uh, because passive skills that have the same effect will stack with each other unless the tooltip there explicitly says that it explicitly says that it won't stack such as in the case of counter retaliate also I imagine venom chaser could could help increase the damage yet more but that was the buzzer just now so as always folks do not stop being awesome and I will catch you in the next video but until then take care